Cerberus does have immunity frames on his jump, so if Baron were to cast an ability and I were to jump at the right time, even if it's just up and back down, oh boy, that's another pick. R1 just chunks, Cerberus comes in, we should be able to just jump out, we have plenty of health, we should be able to rotate out. Athena's rotating in on us. Good idea in practice, but we didn't really need it. Fenrir is here. We're gonna, we don't have a whole lot of mana. We're going to start trying to get some basics. We do have our one. We jump in on him. We shoot him with the one. And we're able to get the pick onto the enemy Cerberus. What a do, skibbity boo. It's your boy Shiny B Gaming. And today we're going to be playing Cerberus in solo. If you are new to the channel, I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, Cerberus does surprisingly well in solo. He has a great team fighting ultimate, and if you can make it to the late game, he's an excellent frontliner. So let's go ahead and jump into Cerberus's kit. Cerberus is one, paralyzing spit, Cerberus's snake tail spits venom that passes through and damages enemies. If Cerberus's dog heads are alert, they also spit venom when the ability is fired. Each head is alerted upon hitting an enemy with a basic attack, and all are alerted after Cerberus's too. Each projectile that hits the same target deals 20% less damage, but hitting an enemy with all four will stun them. The stun duration is going to be 1 second at level 1, and 1.8 seconds at level 5. Cerberus's 2, Ghastly Breath. Each of Cerberus's three heads release a cone of noxious breath in front of him, damaging all enemies in range seven times over 2.4 seconds and reducing their magical protection up to three times. Enemies in the center of his breath are also slowed up to three times. This attack immediately puts all three of Cerberus's heads on alert for his one. The slow protect is going to be 8% at level one and 12% at level five. The slow duration is two seconds and the protection reduction is six at level one and 18 at level five. Cerberus is 3, Soul Expulsion. Cerberus leaps a short distance forward, dealing damage on impact and severing the souls of enemies. These souls will not block Cerberus's attack, and killing the souls will heal Cerberus. Cerberus is Ultimate. Cerberus's haunting whale summons below him the souls of the damned, which then knock up all enemies into the air while stretching the link between their bodies and souls, damaging them. This knockup can be cleansed. A short time later, Cerberus uses the link to pull enemies to him. And finally, Cerberus is passive, Spirit of Death. Anytime an enemy god within 40 units of Cerberus is healed, that healing is reduced by 20% and Cerberus receives 50% of the heal. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1 we want to put a point into our 2, level 2 put a point into our 1, level 3 put a point into our 3, then we want to max out our 1, max out our ultimate whenever we can, max out our 2, and max out our 3. So the important thing to note is the 3 actually does more damage than the 1, but in a lot of matchups in solo, for example if we were going against an Achilles, they could stun us out of our 2 and really reduce our damage output. The 2 does more damage and it also reduces more enemy protections the more points you have into it. So the 2 does more damage, but I feel like the 1 allows you to really clear lane really fast, really effectively, and you don't have to worry about being cancelled out of it. We are going against a Baron Zombie, so he does have a heal built into his kit, which works excellent for our passive. His healing is going to be reduced by 20%, and we're going to gain 50% of what he does heal. We left Fountain with Warrior's Blessing, the Health Chalice, and a couple of Health Bots. Right now we're trying to really tussle with them, trying to get our Warrior Blessing really stacked up. We're going to jump away, kind of rotate to our blue buff. Baron's still rotating in on us. Ooh, 28 health. That was close. We're just going to sit back, trying to let our jungler know that Baron is ripe for the picking. Just go up to lane. We'll go ahead and activate our three. Trying to see if we can get a stun onto the Baron. That was our two, not our three. I need the jungle buff. We're completely out of mana, so we're going to start working on it, and hopefully Fenrir will be able to rotate over and help us out. 
For our relic, we went with Blink because Cerberus's ult is really effective in team fights. If we can Blink in on one or two people, we could probably change the tide of a team fight. We just hit level 5, so now we have our ultimate. Varian's pretty low on health and mana. I think we have more health than him now. We're going to blink in, use our ultimate, use our two, and then we should be able to get him once we get enough mana for our one. Or just playing him up with basic attacks and minions. So that is first blood. That's going to provide us an additional 500 gold. We're going to go ahead and back because we have enough money for our boots. We're going to be picking up the lifesteal boots. Lifesteal boots are going to allow us to sustain in lane a little bit longer. We plan on picking up some cooldown later on in the build. So I think the lifesteal boots are really going to help us out more than the cooldown boots. Ultimate is ready. Okay. Even as your allies fail you, seek Enemy to ultimate. Glows Enemy to After going into lifesteal boots, we're going to start going into void shield. Since we're going against Baron, who is a magical character, void shield is going to provide us some power, some protections, and some health. If we were going against a physical character, we would go into Breastplate of Valor. Baron uses his ultimate. If we were quick enough, we could have jumped out of it. Cerberus is really annoying to go against in solo. You can just use his one and full clear the wave pretty much. We almost can full clear the wave. We're getting there. We're going to go ahead and rotate to our blue because we see our junglers on it. Looks like we're going to be able to make it back to get some XP, which is always nice. I'm building stacks. We're going to use our two, hit the side of the wave, run to the front of it, shoot off our one. Up, oh, they have a Cerberus jungle. We're going to go ahead and fall back. Don't want to get ulted by him. Looks like they're going for the blue buff. We're going to set up a ward so that way we know if Cerberus is rotating back onto us after he hits the blue buff. We're going to go ahead and walk to the side of the wave. Use our two. Walk to the front of the wave and then use our one. Now it's time to basic attack a totem of Kuga. Slain. We're going to jump, land on the Baron, hit him with our 2, apply the slow, hit him with our 1, got an ult him, and we should be able to clean him up. Easy peasy. He had a lot of health and we were able to just melt him. That is the ideal combo. We we're able to use our 2 to reduce his protections and also gain the 4 heads, or the 3 heads of alert. If you take a look at Cerberus's passive icon, there are three heads. If they are glowing, that means that your next one is going to stun. We have minions in tower. We're going to go ahead and proxy this next wave. Once we clear the last minion, we're going to go ahead and rotate into jungle. So right now we have the option of either rotating mid or just hitting a camp. I think the safe play is going to be to just hit a camp. We're gonna go ahead and fall back. Don't want to deal with the enemy Cerberus, although that Harvey just needed one more basic attack. Probably could have secured it, but just played it super safe. We are in need of our blue buff, so after this wave, we're gonna go ahead and rotate to our blue buff. Step to the side, use our one, and we're full clearing wave. We're gonna go ahead and rotate to our blue. Stepping away for a moment. That's not good. Never good when somebody says they're stepping away for a moment. We 
We're gonna come in, use our two, try to get Baron in the middle so that way we slow him. We tag him with one of our ones, but unfortunately not all four connected. Cerberus does have immunity frames on his jump, so if Baron were to cast an ability and I were to jump at the right time, even if it's just up and back down, oh boy, that's another pick. Our one just chunks, Cerberus comes in, we should be able to just jump out, we have plenty of health, we should be able to rotate out. Athena's rotating in on us. Good idea in practice, but we didn't really need it. Fenrir is here. We're gonna, we don't have a whole lot of mana. We're going to start trying to get some basics. We do have our one. We jump in on him. We shoot him with the one. And we're able to get the pick onto the enemy Cerberus. That was a three-man rotation. Raw is still missing in mid. So we're going to be going into Void Shield. Or Void Stone. Void Shield is the physical. Void Stone is going to provide us 150 health. 40 magical power and 60 magical protections. It has a passive that enemy gods within 55 units are going to have their magical protections reduced by 10%. So this item is a really good item in solo because it's a hybrid item. It just gives you all the stats you could possibly want. Health, power, protections, and some penetration. We have three magical characters on our team, so also our team comp really will benefit from the Void Stone. Baron uses his ultimate. We're not going to take any tower shots because we have minions in there. Well, we did take some tower shots there. He was able to get some good damage out of us, but we are just a tanky boy. Trying to let our jungler know that blue would be nice. Even as your allies fail you, seek opportunities to turn the battle. Baron can't stun us out of our two, but if we were chasing him down and he were to root us, there's a good chance that we'd miss a lot of our damage from our two. So that's just another reason why we went in with our one leveling up first and then going into our two after that. The 2 is a better ability, but it just takes longer and can be harder to hit. can also be cancelled out. We get the stun, we're going to come in, use our ultimate, just displace him from the tower, and our raw left. Athena comes in. And we're able to get the pick onto the Baron Somdi. Somebody throws up the surrender. I feel like we're just absolutely dominating in our lane. I do not want to surrender at this point. Your middle tower is under attack. We're gonna go ahead and poke this Serb a little bit. Usually solo lane can chunk the jungler and from that damage check, it looks like that's absolutely true. He's also a level 9. We have four levels on the jungle Cerberus. I feel like we're in a great spot, but I feel like our team is struggling. We're going to rotate to mid, see if there's anything we can do to help out. Unfortunately, we do not have our ultimate. They're able to secure our blue. We're going to get some damage onto the Merlin. We're going to jump in. Hercules is able to pull us back before we can get our one off. We get our stun off onto Hercules. And it does good damage to Hercules too, by the way. I was not expecting that much damage on their enemy support. There's a good chance he doesn't have magical protections yet. So that rotation did cost us a little bit of gold and XP in solo lane. We're going to jump in, use our two, get the slow onto the Baron. Go ahead and shoot our one onto the minion wave because we weren't going to be able to pick Baron. He's standing awfully close to the tower, just not close enough. We jump, we use our ultimate, we're going to throw him in the tower. 
get a tower shot onto him, use our two to get the slow onto him. Athena's coming in, we miss our one. We also backed up so Athena did not land on him. Baron uses his ultimate, we get stunned, Hercules pulls us. We get pushed, that's a shell from our Athena. We're gonna keep chasing this Baron, use our two, and Fenrir is able to get the pick. Now we're in a bit of trouble, and Hercules is able to get the pick on us. Once we jump back in onto the Baron, when he was leaving Fire Giant, that's whenever we kind of committed fully and eventually signed our death contract. Oh look, more work for you to do. After going into Voidstone, we're going to be going into Breastplate of Valor. Breastplate of Valor is going to provide us 65 physical protections, 300 mana, 10 MP5, and 20% cooldown. Breastplate of Valor does not have any passive, so we're getting 20% cooldown. That's mainly why we're getting this item. It's also going to provide us some physical protections, which we needed. Raw comes back. After going into Breastplate of Valor, we are going to be going into Ethereal Staff. Ethereal Staff is a good item. It's going to provide us some health, some magical power, and some crowd control reduction. It has a passive that lets us steal health and mana from the enemy god. So whenever we deal damage, it's going to be relevant damage. Our team throws up the Surrender Vote. We haven't voted. I feel like we don't need a vote and our team is going to surrender. We had an excellent game over in solo, but I feel like everyone else had a terrible game. And our team surrenders. Well, sometimes that's just how the mop flops. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.